The Roman-Etruscan Wars were a series of wars fought between ancient Rome and the Etruscans, from the earliest stages of the history of Rome. Information about many of the wars is limited, particularly those in the early parts of Rome's history, and in large part is known from ancient texts alone. Prior to the foundation of Rome, according to the Roman foundation myth as relayed by Livy, the Etruscans, led by King Mesentius allied with King Turnus of the Rutuli, attacked the Latins in the exiled Trojans, led by Latinus and Aeneas respectively. The Latins and Trojans were victorious, and Turnus was killed in battle. Peace was afterwards concluded on the basis that the river Tiber would be the common boundary between the Etruscans and the Latins. War with Phidonian very under Romulus. In the 8th century BC, during the reign of Rome's first king, Romulus, the Phidonates decided to suppress Rome as a future threat and began to waste its territory. In opposition to which Romulus marched on Phidonia and camped a mile from it. Setting an ambush in the thickets, he brought the rest of the army to the gates of Phidonia to provoke them into exiting the city. Seeing the appearance of disorder the Phidonates sallied out in pursuit and were caught in the ambush. Romulus a troops wheeled drove the Phidonates through their gates so closely that they were not able to close them, and took the town. The Vientus were concerned at the situation with Phidone both because of its proximity to Veri and their consanguinity with the Phidonates, and accordingly launched an incursion into Roman territory. After having done so, the Vientus returned to Veri with their booty. Romulus and the Roman army followed and met the Vientus in battle outside the walls of Veri. The Romans were victorious and the Vientus fled into the city. The Romans, not having the strength to take the city by storm, instead laid waste their lands. The Vientus sued for peace, and a 100-year treaty was concluded upon Vientus giving to the Romans a part of their own territory. In the Second War with Phidone and Veri in the 7th century, Livy describes Phidone as a Roman colony. It may be that a colony was established there after the defeat by Romulus. Second War with Phidone and Veri, under Tullus Hostilius. In the 7th century BC, during the reign of Rome's third king, Tullus Hostilius, the Phidonates and Vientis again went to war with Rome. According to Livy they were incited to war by Matthias Fufius, the dictator of Alba Longa, who had been defeated by and had become in substance a vassal of Rome. The Phidonates openly revolted against Rome. Tullus summoned Metius and his army from Alba Longa and, together with the Roman army, marched on Phidone. The Roman and Alborn army crossed the Anaya and camped near the confluction of the Anaya and the Tiber. The army of Eri crossed the Tiber also and, with the Phidonates, formed up battle lines next to the river. The Vientus closest to the river and the Phidonates nearest the mountains. The Roman Alborn army formed up facing them, the Romans towards the Vientus and the Albans towards the Phidonates. The battle commenced, however Matthias and the Alban troops headed slowly towards the mountains, intending to desert. Tullus exhorted his troops, telling them the Alban army had moved pursuant to his orders. The Phidonates, who being Roman colonists understood Latin, heard what Tullus said about the Albans and feared the Alban army would charge down upon them from the rear. Accordingly they fled the battle. The Romans then routed the Vientus. War with Veri and the Etruscans, under Servius Tullius. In the 6th century BC, according to Livy, Rome's sixth king Servius Tullius went to war with Veri and with the Etruscans. Little is said of the war, except that the king was conspicuous for his valour and good fortune, that he routed a great army of the Etruscans and Vientis, and that the war helped cement his position at Rome, he having only recently become king. According to the Faster Triumphaniles, Servius celebrated three triumphs over the Etruscans, including on 25 November 571 BC and 25 May 567 BC. Livy records that during the reign of Servius' as successor, Tarquinius Superbus, Rome renewed a treaty with the Etruscans. It is not clear which earlier peace treaty was renewed. 
war with Variant Arcanii after the overthrow of the monarchy in 509 BC. In 509 BC the Roman monarchy was overthrown, and the Republic commenced with the election of the first consuls. The deposed king, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus, whose family originated from Tarquinii and Etruria, garnered the support of the cities of Eri and Tarquinii, recalling to the former their regular losses of war and of land to the Roman state, and to the latter his family ties. The armies of the two cities followed Tarquin to battle but were defeated by the Roman army at the Battle of Silva Arcia. The consul Valerius collected the spoils of the routed Etruscans and returned to Rome to celebrate a triumph on 1 March 509 BC. Livy writes that later in 509 BC Valerius returned to fight the Vientus. It is unclear whether this was continuing from the Battle of Silva Arcia or was some fresh dispute. It is also unclear what happened in this dispute. War with Clusium in 508 BC Tarquinius, having failed to regain the throne using his allies of Tarquinii and Veri, next sought the aid of Lars Porsena, king of Clusium in 508 BC. Clusium was at that time a powerful Etruscan city. The Roman Senate heard of the approach of Porsena's army and were afraid lest the people of Rome should out of fear let the enemy into the city. Accordingly, the Senate took a number of measures to strengthen the resolve of the populace, including purchasing grain from the Volsha and from Cumi, nationalizing licenses for the sale of salt, exempting the lower classes from taxes and port customs duties. The measures were successful, and the mood of the populace turned against the enemy. Porsena, with his army, attacked Rome. As his troops were surging towards the Pons Sublicius, one of the bridges over the Tiber leading into the city, Publius Horatius Cocles leapt across the bridge to hold off the enemy, giving the Romans time to destroy the bridge. He was joined by Titus Herminius Aquilinus and Spurius Lartius. Herminius and Lausius retreated as the bridge was almost destroyed. Horatius waited until the bridge had fallen, then swam back across the river under enemy fire. A statue was erected to Horatius in the Comitium, along with land at the public expense, and also private awards. As the attack had been unsuccessful, Porsena next determined to blockade the city. He established a garrison on the Janiculum, blocked river transport, and sent raiding parties into the surrounding countryside. During the siege, the consul Valerius baited a group of the Clusian army with a herd of cattle driven out through the Escaline Gate. Titus Herminius was ordered to lay in wait along the Via Gabina, two miles from Rome. Spurius Lartius was posted with troops inside the Colline Gate. Consul Titus Lucretius Tricipitinus waited with troops at the Nevian Gate, whilst Valerius himself led troops down from the Coelian Hill. The trap was successful, and the band of Clusians were killed. The siege continued. However, when Musius came close to the king, he could not tell apart the king from his secretary, and killed the king's secretary in error. Musius was captured by the Etruscans, and brought before Porsena. He openly declared his identity and what had been his intent. He threatened that he was but merely the first of 300 Roman youths who would attempt such a deed. To prove his valor, Musius thrust his hand into one of the Etruscan campfires, thereby earning for himself and his descendants the cognomen Scaevola. Musius was also granted farming land on the right-hand back of the Tiber, which later became known as the Mushiprata. Porsena, shocked at the youth's bravery, dismissed him from the Etruscan camp free to return to Rome. Most historical sources say the siege ended with a peace treaty. At this point, according to Livy, Porsena sent ambassadors to Rome to offer peace. Terms were negotiated. Porsena requested the throne be restored to Tarquinius, but the Romans refused. However, the Romans did agree to return to the Vientus lands taken from them in previous wars, and Roman hostages were agreed to be given in exchange for the withdrawal from the Janiculum of the Etruscan garrison. The peace was agreed, and hostages taken by Porsena.
One of the hostages, a young woman named Cloelia, fled the Etruscan camp, leading away a group of Roman virgins. Porsena demanded she be returned, and the Romans consented. Upon her return, however, Porsena being impressed by her bravery allowed her to choose half the remaining hostages to be freed. She selected from amongst the hostages the young Roman boys to be freed. Livy recounts that during his own time, public auctions of goods at Rome were by tradition referred to as selling the goods of King Porsena, and that this somehow relates to the war with Clusium. Livy concludes most likely it is because, when Porsena departed Rome, he left behind as a gift for the Romans his stores of provisions. Livy also records that, after the war, a number of the Etruscan soldiers returned to Rome to seek shelter following the war between Clusium and Aricia, and that a number of the Etruscans remained to live in Rome, and were granted an area to live which thereby became known as the Vicus Tuscus. In 507 BC Porcina once again sent ambassadors to the Roman Senate, requesting the restoration of Tarquinius to the throne. Legates were sent back to Porcina, to advise him that the Romans would never readmit Tarquinius, and that Porcina should out of respect for the Romans cease requesting Tarquinius a readmittance. Porcina agreed, telling Tarquinius to continue his exile elsewhere than Clusium. Porcina also restored to the Romans their hostages, and also the lands of Veri that had been taken from Rome by treaty. Although the ancient Romans believed the siege was a historical event that had taken place, many modern historians think the war was at least partly mythical. War between Rome and the Sabines in 505-504 BC in 505-504 BC there was war between Republican Rome and the Sabines. Although Livy makes no mention of the involvement of the Etruscans, the faster triumph fails record that the consul Publius Valerius Poplipola celebrated a triumph over both the Sabines and the Vintus in May 504 BC. The Fabian War with Veri in 483-476 BC. In the years 483-476 BC the Vintus waged a war against Rome, assisted by auxiliaries from amongst the Etruscans. On the Roman side, the members of the gens Fabia featured prominently, and it became almost a personal struggle by that family against Veri. Rome was successful in the war. Livy suggests that in the first year of the war the Romans paid little attention to it, as their own strength was more than sufficient, and they were distracted by internal matters. However the Veientine army entered Roman territory in the following year, 482 BC, and ravaged the countryside. Livy also says that the Vintus threatened to besiege Rome itself in the following year, 481 BC, but that command of the Roman forces was given to the consul S.P. Furious Medullinus and nothing notable occurred in that year.